What's up subscribers and subscribers to be? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different on the channel. I'm starting a new segment called the keys to stock trading. For the most part, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the features in the Robinhood app that I use that have helped me to make money. If you're using other apps, don't worry. Most other trading platforms have these same features. And if you're personally interested in getting Robinhood, check my link in the description below so you can get one free stock for signing up. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about limit orders and stop orders. Being that I mostly use the Robinhood app, I'm going to be navigating through this for the most part using the Robinhood app with you guys. And I'm looking at a stock that I've recently been looking at called Conagra, which specializes in frozen and refrigerated food goods. I'm going to start off by showing you guys the limit and stop order options when it comes to buying a stock first. If I'm in the Robinhood app, I'm going to first find the stock that I'm looking to trade. In this instance, it's going to be Conagra. I'm going to tap trade. As I said, we're going to start with the buy option, so I'm going to tap on buy. In the top right corner, you'll see where it says market order. You're going to click that drop down menu, and you'll see where it has limit order options as well as the stop order options. A regular market order is just a basic order. A trailing stop order is still going to be a stop order just based off of a percentage of the current stock value. Um, I'm not really going to get into that. And a stop limit order is a little bit more complex, so I'm not going to get into that for this video either. We're going to look at a limit order buy first. When you're placing a limit order buy, you're choosing a price target um, that once a stock drops to that price, you're automatically going to buy that share. Whether you're there to actively do it or not, your account is going to automatically do it for you if the money is there. That's what a limit buy is. A stop order buy is when you purchase a stock once it rises to a certain level and you automatically want to sell. If you want to place a limit or stop order sale, you will go to your preferred stock, in this case, Conagra. You're going to tap on trade and click on sale. In the top right corner, you're going to click market order. And you'll see the same type of drop down list that we did when we saw the buy screen. Market order is when you're buying at the current market price. Um, a trailing stop order is going to be similar to the sales stop orders that we're going to talk about soon, but it's based off a percentage of the current stock price. That's a little bit more advanced, but we're not going to get into that. If you understand what we're talking about, you can go back and pretty much figure out what a trailing stop order is and how it works. And a stop limit order, that's a little bit more complex. We're not going to go that far into details in this video. We're going to be looking at the limit and stop order, being that those are the most important and the ones that I use most often. When you're doing a limit order sale, you're choosing a price where once a stock rises to that price, you're automatically going to sell. Whereas for a stock order sale, you're going to wait until a stock drops to a certain price and then you're going to automatically sell that stock. The ones that I use most often are limit buys and stop order or stop loss sales. I'm going to come back to those in just a second. For the most part, I never use stock order purchases. The reason being is because you're basically waiting for a stock to go up in value before purchasing. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. That's like walking into a store, seeing a shirt for $20, knowing that the shirt will be $30 next week and be like, no, nah, I'm just gonna wait for next week and pay the $30. So for the most part, I never ever use stock order buys. As far as limit order sales though, they do have their purposes but for the most part, I don't use them either. Let's say that you have a stock and you know that you completely want to sell out of this stock once it hits a certain price. You can do that with a limit order sale. Me personally, if I see one of my stocks going up, I'm typically going to ride it out and place a stop loss sale, but I'll talk about it in a second as well. But like I said, if you have a particular goal where you know you want to sell a stock, a limit order can be good for that because let's say a stock is going up and down. If it touches that point, you'll automatically sell at that point and you're insured your money. Me personally, like I said, I don't do that because the stock has potential to go up even more. And I really just place a stop loss right there so I can continue to make money. And I'm going to explain this to you in just a second. Sorry, baby. You got a little thirsty. Okay, I want to quickly show you guys how I use stop loss sales as well as limit buys to protect myself when I'm purchasing stocks, to hedge against the possibility of a recession, and to make a lot more money. 
Um, I want to use Tesla stock as an example because what recently happened with Tesla in the last two years is kind of like what happens with the recession. Tesla stock is an example of a small recession. Okay, so let's look at Tesla stock prior to 2019. Tesla stock had got up to about, about $400. Elon Musk got into some trouble, some things happened. They kind of caused a lot of criticism around the stock. So just like in a recession, the stock began to plummet kind of dramatically. As this stock began to go down, I placed limit buys. And I would place more limit buys if the stock dropped even more. The reason that I purchased these limit buys is because let's say for whatever reason the stock jumped back up, my stock would still automatically be purchased once they hit my number. Let's say I slept too long one day or just didn't watch the stock market one day and missed out, my stock profile was gonna automatically do it for me. I even had some limit buyers placed lower than 180, hoping that the stock would go lower. Just so happened the stock didn't go lower, so I didn't get a chance to purchase at that lower price. Just like in a recession, after the recession or down period was over, the stock shot up quickly. And this is why I, I made those limit buys, because I didn't get to my lowest number, which I wanted, which I think at the time was 150. But I did play some limit buys ahead of that. And in a quick amount of time, the stock began to go back up. When the stock rose, I was only able to purchase one Tesla stock. But thanks to my limit buys, I had already purchased plenty of the stock on the way down. Once Tesla reached about 950, I got worried. I was really worried being that I had already made so much money. Normally stocks go up about 10% a year and I had almost quadrupled on some of my stocks. So what I did to protect myself against any losses, I placed a stock loss sale at 850. As it began to drop down, which I kind of expected it to do some, I sold at 850. Um, had the stock went up more, it wouldn't really matter to me because I would, like I said, on most of my stock more than quadrupled uh, my value, which isn't a bad takeaway. And if the stock continued to go down, which I expect to happen even more, I could possibly make some more money. And I want to show you how I did this as well. Once I sold at um, 850, I also had a limit buy at 725. So once the stock hit 725, I purchased back those same stocks that I had just sold for 750, meaning that I had made $75 on each one of those stocks. And I still had the same amount of Tesla stock left in my portfolio. So not only did I make money from doing that and the stock is now going back up, I took the money that I made from each one of those Tesla stocks and I bought more Uber stock. So I now have the same amount of Tesla stock that I initially had. They're still up in value and I have more stock in another company that I didn't even put up my own money per se to purchase. Being that Tesla stock is currently at around $800, I still have stock losses placed on the stock at about $725 all the way down to 600 um, different stop losses for varying amounts, probably about three within those spaces, just in case something does happen to the stock or if a recession happens. But I do expect the stock to go up even more. But like I said, if it does happen to go down, I cash out anywhere between 725 to 600, which is still triple um, what I got a lot of my stocks for. Just in case you missed anything, I'm gonna recap that right quick. What I did was I saw that Tesla was kind of undervalued at 400, even though the stock was going up. So I, I began to purchase once I noticed that it was going down. I set limit buys all along the way to, um, to help me just in case I was too busy and missed out on anything. And it did a lot. I was able to purchase a few of those Tesla stocks as they went down. I wasn't able to get that much while it was going up. It didn't really matter. But once it shot up by a lot, just to hedge some of my profits, I put a stock loss in. The stock did indeed go down a little bit. It hit my stop losses. I sold some of my stocks and I was able to repurchase them at a lower price using another limit buy. I took some of my profits and I purchased other stocks and now both of those stocks are going up. I think Tesla's up another like, I don't know, uh, seven to eight percent since then at that 7725 mark. And I think Uber's up another like eight percent since then. So I'm saying this to say that using limit buys as well as stock losses can be very helpful if you're trying to protect against a loss or make some money with the stock market. Do keep in mind that um, this time period was over a few years. If you had an app such as the Robinhood app, they'll send you a lot of news links so you can kind of figure out when things are happening. They can kind of help you to determine uh, whether or not you should be placing certain limit buys or stock losses. 
If you're new to stocks and you're looking for a way to purchase, the Robinhood app is how I do most of my purchasing. If you use my link, you can get a um, free stock. Kind of think of it as my gift to you for watching the video with us today. And with that being said, thank you for you guys' time and have a great day. I'm about the bag, go get the money. Count that cat and back to the money, put that on repeat. Go get the bag, go get the bag, and now we coming. If you really bought your money, put a dollar in the app. If you really bought your hustle, put a dollar in the app. You ain't taking else for nothing, put a dollar in the app. You ain't got no hustle muscle, get the fuck up out of hell.